comparing old drawings of Berlin with old photos of Berlin. Hello, fellow truth seekers. Let's compare some old drawings of buildings in Berlin with old photos of the same buildings. I think it will be interesting to assess the accuracy of the drawings. Before photos were common it was the drawings that were the photography of the day. So it would make sense that they would mostly be expected to be accurate to a certain degree. I guess what I am trying to say is that going forward on my channel I would like to be able to study old drawings and be able to give them the benefit of the doubt without needing to instantly dismiss them because the content of the drawing seems implausible to some people. All the drawings of Berlin in this video come from a book published in 1885. The link is in the description. In this image, the first thing I notice is that there are many people around. The streets are really busy. I also notice what look like trams being pulled by horses. The trees look quite young. By focusing on these two buildings, I was able to find this picture taken in the 1890s. We can see that the drawing is accurate by comparing these two buildings. And notice, although there are tram lines, there are still horse-drawn trams in the picture. The street looks equally as busy as in the drawing from around 10 years previous. I also happened to find this photo from 1910. Perhaps slightly busier than before, with more traffic and more people in the street. A major construction project is about to be completed. This railway station and elevated track are new. And as you can see it is not quite finished, with an uncompleted roof and what looks like scaffolding still in place. This building was called the Schauspielhaus, which is the German word for theater. According to Wikipedia, it was built in 1818 to replace the old theater that had burned down in 1817. I found a photograph of this building from the 1980s but from a different angle. However, you can still see that it is a totally accurate depiction of the building. I believe this building was an opera house at the time, but I cannot be sure. Here in a photo from the 1890s we can once again see it is accurate. The only difference I can see is this aerial here. This building is known as the Old Museum, which amazingly is still a museum today. According to Wikipedia, it was built from 1825 to 1830. Again, we see plenty of people around all looking well-dressed. The accuracy is once again impeccable, implying that we should have no issues taking all the photos in the book at face value as accurate to reality. One thing I have noticed is a distinct lack of antique tech in Berlin at this time. Here we can see a large onion dome. The only photo I could find was from 1910 from the other side of the same building. Here is a closer look at that onion dome. According to Wikipedia, Zeppelins were first flown commercially in 1910, so this one will be one of the first. And of course we have the Brandenburg Gate, one of Germany's most famous landmarks. I dare say any artist worth their salt would not dream of misrepresenting this iconic structure. Here we have a photo from the 1890s. And another photo from 1910. It looks like a military parade. Notice the people stood on the roof. You can notice a large Roman influence on the architecture in these photos. That is no doubt because Germany was a large part of the Holy Roman Empire. According to Wikipedia, this station was built in 1878. This is the Berlin Anhalter Bahnhof. It opened on the 1st of July 1841 and closed for traffic in 1952.
The Rathaus was built between 1861 and 1869. Again, the drawing and the photo are identical except for this addition of what looks like a flagpole or some sort of antenna. The Rotz Rathaus is the town hall of Berlin. The building was heavily damaged by Allied bombing in World War II and rebuilt to the original plans between 1951 and 1956. To summarize, we didn't see any evidence of mud flood and antiqui tech in these photos, but it is a very small sample size. We did see heavily influenced Roman architecture, no doubt due to Germany being a very large part of the Holy Roman Empire. But the point of this video was to establish that old world drawings can be very accurate, as they were the photographs of the day. Of course, skeptics will say there is a difference between drawings of architecture and people, and there may be some truth to that. But if we look at a picture like this, should we automatically dismiss it? I don't think so. Or how about this painting? So what do you think? Can we give old drawings and painting credibility despite them showing things that according to the mainstream narrative never existed? Let me know in the comments. That is all.